Cryptids are such an interesting topic of discussion, and something I love to see played around with in the media. Let's take the Mothman as an example. A human-sized winged cryptid that allegedly showed itself to the residents of Point Pleasant, West Virginia back in the 1960s. His sightings, combined with many of UFOs and the Men in Black, led up to the Silver Bridge tragedy of December 1967 with him disappearing without a trace. I've actually been to Point Pleasant, West Virginia and their Mothman Museum filled with movie props and old news newspaper clippings from the original sightings. But let's not get on a tangent. Mothman has been put into media and video games many times, from the Fallout 76 cryptid to the Danger Mothman Yu-Gi-Oh! Monster card. And then there's this game, a bit of a throwback to old computer adventure games. Here is my review of Mothman 1966 for the Nintendo Switch. Mothman takes place in an area not so different from West Virginia and stars four people. We have the old man Holt, young couple Victoria and Lee, and a strange rider named Lou. What starts as a simple drive of Victoria and Lee going out on a date soon becomes a horror-filled night with rabid coyotes, ghostly possession, and entities that are not that different from what was depicted about the real Mothman from the 1960s. The story is pretty interesting and I would describe it as a horror-themed short story. It only spans a single night and shows what each of the four characters are doing as it progresses. Lee and Victoria going on their date, each one dealing with supernatural encounters that they are all involved with. And it resolves itself in a way that I kind of expected to hear Rod Serling's voice to bring me out of the Twilight Zone. I would say I wish there was more lore and background, and I kind of do, but with the way the story is told, it really makes sense for it to be ambiguous and vague on things. Now when it comes to gameplay, Mothman is an adventure game, kind of a visual novel sort of thing. As you trek through it, you'll navigate story scenes and occasionally make choices and have to solve a puzzle through those choices. Now as I just said, main progression is pretty much what you do in a visual novel. You can skip, look at the log, autoplay, save and load at most situations, everything you typically find in a VN, even though it looks very different. But outside of that, you'll frequently get to dialogue choices and interactive puzzles, I guess? The goal is to advance the story and many of the choices are what you decide to do or talk about in a particular situation. Like Lou asking Holt about his grandma and Holt deciding whether or not to bring it up. But others will come up as a live or die sort of interaction. Same concept with a dialogue choice, but you choose wrong and you get eaten alive by coyotes. You have to experiment around with choices to figure out how to do it just right. It's a cool function, but very clunky. You can't save at any of these events, but getting the wrong choice just resets it. That choice didn't work and you got eaten, so just keep going through trial and error until it works. For a game that has alternate options for events, it would have been cool if there had been a bunch of alternate paths and endings past just, hey, you ducked the wrong way and now you're dead, try again. But in the game's defense, there is enough here to expand it beyond a single run. There are a bunch of different choices you can make for events that don't always just end in boom you're dead. Some minigames have special events when you do things just right and the gallery on the main menu will help you track what you have done and what you haven't. That also brings us to content and length, as there's not a whole lot here. Accounting for me having a lot of trouble and confusion with one of the puzzles, it took me about an hour and a half to get through the whole game. It's a very short and brief story, hence my comparing it to a short story. That's okay for the $9 game, though going back for the alternate scenes will help extend that a little bit. Plus, you can play the solitaire minigame anytime from the main menu once you beat it. Next up, Presentation. This is a game wanting to mimic old CG-based computer games of a time long past. Everything is pixelated and has a very 1980s NES sound effect and text era vibe. And it does it pretty well. The sound effect you get when text is scrolling really reminds me of that era. Performance is good as well. Load times are short, no lag or crashing or anything like that. Now that that's out of the way, let's go into battery life. Mothman 1966 gives the original model a range of 3 hours and 12 up to 3 hours and 41. The Nintendo Switch Lite gets a range of 3 hours and 39 up to 4 hours and 15. The Red Boxer V2 2019 model gets a range of 10 hours and 2 up to 10 hours and 50. And the OLED model gets a range of 10 hours and 30 up to 11 hours and 33. 
In conclusion, Mothman 1966 channels the energy of the Mothman sightings of West Virginia while doing something much more Twilight Zone-esque with its creepy tail. Now on the downside, there's a lot of clunk to the trial and error puzzle system, and it's a really short game, at least outside of replaying for a few extended and optional scenes. But still, if you're in the mood for a little short story with weird horror to it, it's pretty good and would have made a great episode of The Twilight Zone. Reviews to go rates Mothman 1966 for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.